If you're one of the 40% of fibromyalgia patients that utilize opioid-based pain medications as part of your treatment strategy, you might think that low-dose naltrexone, which is an opioid blocker, might be completely off the table for you. What I have found is that low-dose naltrexone actually can be combined with opioids in certain circumstances and in certain ways. In fact, Ultra-low-dose naltrexone, when combined with opioids, actually enhances opioid pain relief. I'm Dr. Ginevra. I'm a physician with fibromyalgia myself. I'm on a mission to share the empowering and inspirational knowledge needed to defeat this illness. I call this being fibro-fierce. Low-dose naltrexone reduces fibromyalgia pain by lowering neuroinflammation. I go into much more detail about how low-dose naltrexone works for fibromyalgia pain in another video, which I've linked in the description below, and in my book, The Fibro Manual. Low-dose naltrexone reduces neuroinflammation by acting on specific receptors on the glial cells, which are immune cells in the brain. It does this by acting on non-opioid receptors, but the challenge is naltrexone also blocks opioid receptors. That means the conventional wisdom is don't combine opioids with low-dose naltrexone because theoretically, if you bring in an opioid blocker and you have opioids sitting on your receptors in the brain, then naltrexone is gonna knock those receptors uh, empty, basically, and it's those empty receptors that induce opioid withdrawal symptoms, and they are not pleasant. We're talking nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, sweating, anxiety, body aches, and much more. Because opioids are often used to manage fibromyalgia pain, it creates this dilemma where we want to try low-dose naltrexone for its neuroinflammation effects and its overall pain-reducing effects for fibromyalgia but we run into the roadblock of, well, you're on an opioid, can we combine it? This is probably the most common question I get from other healthcare providers is, can low-dose naltrexone ever be combined with opioids? And if so, how? I'm gonna share with you in this video my tips, tricks, successes, and fails around combining low-dose naltrexone and opioids. A typical low-dose naltrexone dosage is 4.5 milligrams, and theoretically anything above about a 1 milligram dosage can potentially cause opioid withdrawal if combined with an opioid. The challenge is everybody varies in how sensitive they are to opioid withdrawal. I've definitely had patients that can take the regular low-dose naltrexone of 4.5 milligrams along with their typical dose of opioids and do just fine. And then I've had folks that take a tiny, tiny 0.35 milligram of naltrexone along with just a very low dose of opioids and they have severe withdrawal symptoms. So that is what makes this very tricky and you really have to individualize it and start low and go slow if you're gonna to try to combine opioids and low-dose naltrexone. But with experience, I have gained some general guidelines that I'll share with you, some rules of thumb, so to speak, about ways that low-dose naltrexone can be combined with opioids and ways that really should not be. So the first is I don't recommend combining low-dose naltrexone with any long-acting opioid. And that is anything that's in a patch form, an extended release, a controlled release form. The reason is how these medications work is they're giving you a, a small amount of opioid at all times, right? That's how they have their long-acting effect. So the likelihood that naltrexone is gonna come in and meet an opioid that's currently occupying a receptor is pretty high when you're talking about long-acting opioids. Now it's a different story when you're talking about short-acting opioids because there's theoretically a time where the short-acting opioids have, have lowered, have gotten out of your system enough that most opioid receptors are kind of uh, empty and the naltrexone is not gonna come in and knock them off their receptors. That being said, if you are gonna combine low-dose naltrexone and an opioid, you wanna make sure to separate the dosages by at least four to six hours. 
Meaning if somebody takes their last dose of tramadol around dinner time, they shouldn't take any more, and then they can take their low-dose naltrexone at bedtime. So there's kind of a four to six hour gap there. And what that means is that, that the tramadol, theoretically enough of it is out of your system that when you take that low-dose naltrexone, you won't experience any ill effects. The beauty with that is, could, could somebody get the benefit of the anti neuroinflammatory kind of the the benefit of low-dose naltrexone along with the benefit of opioids. And that's kind of what we're trying to figure out in this delicate, delicate scenario. I also don't recommend combining low-dose naltrexone with an opioid unless it's on the total dose, total daily dose is on the lower end, meaning around 50 milligrams of morphine per day or morphine equivalents per day or less. In addition, if I'm going to try somebody on low-dose naltrexone and they are on a short-acting opioid, I'm going to start with an even lower dose than usual of low-dose naltrexone. Typically, we start at like a 1.5 milligram dose. I would start at maybe half that at 0.75 milligrams and then really slowly ramp dosages up to make sure that folks are tolerating it. That is a way that I have had some success actually with with combining low-dose naltrexone and short-acting moderately to low, low low-dosed opioids. Now, interestingly, now, trexone, when it's used in an ultra low dose form or a micro dose form, has an even more exciting or a very a different way of benefiting opioid based pain reduction. It, in fact, seems to make opioids work better. Ultra low dose naltrexone has a really interesting role in enhancing the pain reducing effects of opioids. So when we're talking about ultra low dose naltrexone or micro dosing, it's usually meaning dosage under around one milligram, but typically more like 0.35 milligrams or lower. And what we found is that that tiny amount of naltrexone has a few beneficial effects. It seems to lower the amount of tolerance that is developed or that occurs with chronic opioid use. Tolerance means needing higher dosages over time to achieve the same result. It seems to enhance the pain relief that opioids give. And most importantly, it seems to reduce or block the development of opioid-induced hyperalgesia. And what that means is basically worsened pain hypersensitivity that's actually caused by chronic usage of high doses of opioids. And unfortunately, I think that that may be why opioids in general, particularly in the higher doses when used chronically, don't actually show in the studies that they really give a net overall improvement in fibromyalgia pain. Now that's a topic worthy of a whole nother video. In fact, I'll do other videos about it. But suffice it to say that I generally find that opioids used just as needed, maybe 30% of the time or less tend to do well over time with fibromyalgia with patients kind of retaining their the benefit that they get from the pain medications. But when pay, people are on higher doses over time, you do see this development of tolerance and sometimes kind of a worsening of pain that can be very confusing. And I, I think that the addition of ultra low dose naltrexone can really block or lower some really important negative aspects of chronic opioid use and perhaps increase the pain benefit. And this effect has been seen in both animal and human studies. And I'm gonna go into some of the human studies in just a moment. There is a formulation of oxycodone plus a tiny dose of naltrexone, 0.001 milligram of naltrexone. This combination is called oxytrex. And when they looked at it for osteoarthritis, they found that this combination gave better pain relief than oxycodone alone. And when they looked at it for back pain, they found that it gave better pain relief than oxycodone. And actually patients had to use less oxycodone to get the same effect. I have no idea why this was not ever brought to market, but it certainly shows that this combination can actually really give better pain relief and in fact enhance opioid-based analgesia. 
We think that the micro doses of naltrexone have this effect because they do a few things. First, just like higher doses of naltrexone, it keeps glial cells in their resting or inactive form, keeps them basically in their anti-inflammatory, not their pro-inflammatory state. There's also some really interesting data that when, when opioid receptors are exposed to chronic high levels of opioids, they actually start changing their shape. So initially they're in an inhibitory shape, and that means when they have an opioid bind to them, they reduce or slow pain transmission. But over time, it starts switching to more an excitatory or enhancing pain transmission state. And what we found is that if you are exposed to prolonged amounts of opioids, it seems to trigger this change to the excitatory configuration, whereas naltrexone, particularly in this tiny little dosage of ultra low dose naltrexone, prevents this change. So basically keeps glial cells in their resting form and it keeps the opioid receptors in their the form in which they uh, block or slow pain transmission when they're activated. Even with ultra low dose naltrexone, I tend to avoid combining it with long acting opioids or high doses of opioids out of an abundance of caution, a concern that that combination would cause opioid withdrawal symptoms. In some of my patients that I tried it with, it certainly did. Others tolerated it just fine. But I tended to kind of shy away, away from it with long-acting opioids in particular. However, with short-acting opioids, that was a different story. And there was a couple patients that illustrated to me just how helpful it can be to add ultra-low-dose naltrexone to their short-acting opioid. In particular, I have one patient who has really bad migraines, really bad fibromyalgia, tried everything under the sun. Literally, the only thing that gave her even a modicum of relief was oxycodone. Unfortunately, she developed tolerance to oxycodone really quickly. So within a few months, the dosage would have to be escalated and we'd reach kind of a ceiling effect where it just wasn't helping anymore. When we added ultra low dose naltrexone to her oxycodone regimen, however, and it was only about 20 milligrams a day total of oxycodone, which is on the lower end, with that, she was actually able to have sustained benefit for almost about I think it was about two years before we had to increase her oxycodone dose at all. Whereas before it'd be like every two months we were having to increase the, the dosage to get, get the same effect. So for her and for patients like her really seemed to limit the development of tolerance, which can make opioids much more useful and much safer actually, because you're able to stay at a lower dose. I hope that you've learned something interesting about combining opioids and low-dose naltrexone. Ultra-low-dose naltrexone, I think, is probably really underused in uh, combination with opioid-based analgesia. I'm hoping you learned something useful, and if you are on opioids, I encourage you to talk with your provider, share this video with them, and see if they can work with you on maybe trying ultra-low-dose naltrexone. In the meantime, stay fierce.